Hey, man. Who rearranged my frogs? Was it you? Did you rearrange my frogs? It's probably him. All right. Welcome back to Thick Riff Thursday. Today, I'm writing a riff only using stock Logic plugins. And I know what you're thinking. Nick, stock Logic plugins are... I was gonna say they're bad, but they're, they're actually not. Logic actually has really good stock plugins. I started building something the other day. I dialed in a rhythm guitar tone, a clean guitar tone, and a lead tone, and a bass tone. And I got some pretty good drums out of just Logic's drum library. I mean, like you can do a lot with just stock Logic plugins and instruments. So everyone's been asking, can I please get your writing template? Everybody's been asking for the writing template. So I'm super excited to announce that this stock Logic template, my writing template for Get Good Drums Modern and Massive, and my writing template for the P5 Matt Halpern Signature Kit are all available on the Architect Tiger Studios website right now. Check the link in the description. When you get to the website, head on over to the shop drop down menu, click writing templates. And here you can see all the writing templates that are available, installation instructions, and you can look at a list of the plugins and libraries required to fully use the templates. So I made this stock logic writing template because not everyone is going to have the plugins that I use and the libraries that I use on my regular writing templates. So I wanted to make something that anybody with logic can download and boot up and use and have a nice writing template mix to get their ideas out into. So yeah, let's get into it. I've got a riff in mind already. Uh, do I have a pick in my pocket? I do. My pockets never let me down. <laughs> So that's the good, Jesus, that's the guitar tone I dialed in. I've got some pedals, I've got Logic's amp modeler, got some EQ, and then I've got a noise gate on the end of it. The clean tone. Here's what I've got going on in the clean tone. I've got a couple pedals, compressor and chorus, and then I'm using this pawn shop amp, and then I'm going direct, no cab, for maximum brightness. And then I've got this silver compressor here. This is Logic's like old stock compressor. Um, it really just sounds great. The only thing though, it doesn't have an output knob. So I have to I have to add a gain plug in because it just ends up being super loud. The lead tone is pretty similar to the rhythm tone, just a little bit more boosted. And I think the EQ is a little different. And then it's got some delay obviously on it. The bass tone. The bass tone took the most work out of all these tones. How I set the pedals up on the bass tone was, I really wanted the distortion from these pedals, but obviously not all the way. It's kind of just cutting out all that low end. So I basically use this mixer as a, as a mix knob in here and I had it set to 75%. So I've got the clean channel running through, the, the clean signals running through this pedal board, but adding a little bit of dirt to it, you know? And I, you know, you can dial this, back. As, as, uh, as needed. And yeah, here's the, here's what the bass amp looks like. And then added because sometimes you don't want to use real bass or you don't have real bass available to you. So this attitude bass is very nice. I used to use it all the time back when I first started using Logic and I didn't have a good bass yet. So I started using this attitude bass and it's really the nicest bass out of honestly everything on Logic for metal. It sounds really good. I haven't really dialed it in yet. I'm gonna dial that in in this video, but really like that's a, that's a pretty good sounding programmed bass. Okay, the riff I had in mind. Yep, 
yeah, I think that's good. Let's get some drums on there. Nice. Add the cymbals in there. Whoops, I kind of messed up there at the end. That's cool. That's a cool riff, actually. It's kind of monumentsy. Although my down picking technique is nowhere near John Brown's. You know what? I'm feeling like this snare is a little bit like scooped. Nice. And it was a little too sizzly, too. So I like having some of that mid range back and pulling out some of that sizzliness. I'm gonna do programmed bass on this and I'm gonna do live bass and we're gonna like, I don't know, we're gonna compare the two because I wanna, I wanna try both and we'll see what sounds better. Okay, I just messed up the last two notes. <laughs> and then I'll go and force legato for all of that, but I'm gonna have to cut those long notes. Let's try the like pedal, pedal board mix thing like I did with the real bass chain. Yeah, it just adds, I feel like it adds just the right amount of dirt. Okay, I think the added two basses sounded pretty good. Let's, um, let's try the real bass. That was a pretty good take. Yeah, that's really annoying right there. First impressions between the real bass tone and the attitude bass. I think the attitude bass has a nicer, subby, more consistent low end, but the real bass has more like, sounds more aggressive. Yeah, I think we're just losing some of that like low, low end in the real bass. Like some of, some of this down here. I don't think I really want to boost it, but well, maybe a little bit. I actually think I prefer the real bass. Honestly, they're pretty close. They're pretty close. I like them both. I think they both sound really good. I think at least for now, I, I prefer the real bass, but really the programmed bass option is, is not bad to have if you don't have a real bass. Okay, I wanted to come up with like a chorusy riff. I like that chord progression. Let me try that. I don't want to do that rhythm at the end. Yeah, I want it to like slow down a little bit there. There we go. That was, I nailed that first take, dude. Ooh, the modern dark ride sounds good. There we go. That's what I was trying to get, the like fast part on this chord. Let's drop the bass in there first, and then I'll try to figure out a lead. There we go. 
I'm I'm thinking maybe like something constant, like a do 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 do. That's that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Hang on, hang on. That would be a cool way to turn it around. Let's try it. I messed it up, but that was cool. I like that a lot, actually. Kind of has a kind of has like a kill switch vibe to it. Yeah. I just need to get that last that last slide up to that that last one. That was it. That was it. I got the slide. Let's put a drum fill at the end of this. Double on the kick. So like There we go. And then we can go back into that main riff. Maybe to like end it, just to just to have a nice ending on it, we could go hi-hat, flam on the snare, kick, and then double tom. Yeah. I think maybe the guitar riff could play on its own for the first few bars as like a little intro. Maybe like a little plug-in sound at the beginning of that. Oh, you know how I like that kind of sh So it's like. Maybe a little flam, flam snare action. A little like ghost note kick there would be nice. kind of punk. It's kind of punk rock. Dude, we have a riff. We have a riff. That's a riff. Awesome, man. I think this stock logic writing template is pretty dialed in at this point. All right, let's do a final listen through. Hell yeah, dude. That's a really cool riff too, actually. I'm I'm liking this, uh, I'm liking that main riff and the chorus. So yeah, these writing templates, all three of them, the stock logic one, the modern and massive and the P5 template. Now the modern and massive and P5 templates are the same except the drum libraries are different. So one's gonna have modern and massive and the other one's gonna have the P5 kit. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Thick Riff Thursday. Remember to check the description for the Architect Tiger Studios link and check out these writing templates for yourself. I'm really excited. I know a lot of people have been asking for my main writing template. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next week. Peace.